Hello everyone, Oscapped here. You're probably wondering, why do I look like Noodle Pants in this hot pink outfit with a Brahmin head? If you want, I could talk like this, but that would just confuse you. I am in Noodle's character because I wanted to do some VATS tests with the Cremator, and I'm more of a VATS player than she is. She's also really busy in the other room working on some other videos, so rather than wait, I decided to just make this video myself. I want to say a quick thank you to our channel members, without whose support it would be a lot more difficult to do this. If you are new to the channel and just discovered us and you like the content that we produce, please consider becoming a member. Members get special stuff that other people don't get, and if you're seeing the kind of content that we produce, you can probably imagine what kind of special stuff that is. Hit the big join button down below and come see what the real party is. The Cremator is a fantastic weapon in certain circumstances. In VATS, depending on how you have it rigged up and how the creature that you're attacking is moving, you might find that it performs suboptimally. But there's ways around that, and that's what we're gonna get into in this video. So first, let's jump over to the workbench and I'll show you how I've got this thing built out and why I made the choices that I did. So here you see the current configuration of the cremator. And I changed out the barrel because all of the barrels do 140 points of damage. So this one does 140 with a single shot. This one does 140 with four shots. And this one does 140 with two shots. So you're just, you're getting 140 versus the heavy barrel, which does 245 points of damage. So clearly I want the heavy barrel because it does more damage. And then I also switched out the tank for the slow burning tank. Now this results in slightly lower damage for the base damage, but it does do almost 1,200 points of damage over 12 seconds. So that's 100 points of damage a second. And that to me sounds like a great thing, especially for ranged attacks where you want your enemy to die before they get to you. So this is the configuration. And the first place we're gonna test this is Morgantown Airport on some Scorched because they are very easy to kill. So what do we got? We got some Scorched running around out here. Let's start by targeting a head. That was a hit, and it looks like we took out both of them. So we've got some good blast effects. Miss. Miss, but was close enough to still do damage. So what you gotta ask yourself is, is it better with VATS to get your rounds close to the target, or can you just miss on your own and do just as well? Okay, in my opinion, that's actually better than VATS. Sure, VATS gives you the confidence of knowing that even if you have terrible aim, you'll still hit something. Like, I can't see that guy through the tree. So shooting him with VATS at least assures me that my rounds are gonna get close to him. And that's fine with a stationary creature, but it may not be fine with the creature that's moving. So let's go find some creatures that move around, like the super mutants out at Grafton Steel. Oh, this is my favorite part. Yeah, 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 and... Die! Oh, no? Come on. There you go. Oh, there's two of you. Dirty trick. Oh, you're also on fire. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> oh, man. All right, range damage and burn and die. This is a very cool weapon for shooting through things. Blah! <laughs> All right, let's... Let's see if I can get, oh, hello. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay. So there, notice that the round followed him as he moved. Where's this guy at? Where are you at, Holmes? Oh, there you are. Oh, stuck. Okay, this, stupid thing that pops up in the middle of the screen about new quests being available is really annoying. Can I shoot through a window? I can. That's pretty cool. Oh, good lord. Where are you? Okay, the first time that I ran all of this stuff, the VATS functionality was way less effective because I was targeting them in their head. Oh, hello. Torso is definitely better. 
So notice how head misses, torso hits. And I don't think it really has to do with that's efficacy. Okay, let's see what happens here. And he's on fire. I think it just works better if you hit them in the torso. Which means you don't even need concentrated fire as a perk because you're not gonna be targeting limbs. Like with my 50 cal, I'm always targeting people in their head. Okay, let's see. Let's see if this guy will move the way that I want him to. Headshot. Hit. Huh. Okay, let's jump down to the nuke zone. There we go. Don't spend 53 caps if you don't have to, kids. Okay, now here, when the enemy moves, your shots do not follow. So you can see I'm basically missing her with every single shot. So it would be far better for me to just sight. This is so loud. Okay, wait for her to land. Now what? Oh, she's still scuttling around like a little spider. It's nice of somebody to freeze her so that I can test this. Torso. Now, is this better than, oh. Than just shooting regularly? I don't think it is. Ah, I keep falling in a hole. Ha, scorch beast butt. Oh, and I got noodle killed. Oh, and now I'm in a blast zone. That's not where I want to be. Oh, that's quite bad. I'm going to die in a second. All right, the burn damage over time, when it actually works, is pretty freaking amazing. Having an opportunity to fight the Scorch Beast Queen was unexpected and demonstrated some of what I was talking about in the intro where I said that Vats behaves, well, differently. But I want to take you to another very powerful enemy, and that is the Mirelurk Queen. She's going to move around a lot. She's going to move closer, further away, side to side, and she's also a ranged attacker. So it's a good demonstration of the functionality of the Cremator against, well, this particular type of enemy. This weapon gives you a decided advantage over the Mirelurk Queen. because she is a ranged attacker, and now you are as well. And you can just, oh, good Lord, she is terrifying. Ah, run away. All right, so there are lots of these guys here. Oh, Noodle's gonna get messed up. Oh! Oh, canned coffee, where are you? Okay, there she is, good. Where is she? Oh, she's following me through the water, of course. Is there another one out there? Oh, there's little babies. Go to hell, little babies. All right, here with a 95% chance of, oh my God, of dying. Here, and there she went. So she actually was taking 
a little wretched creature. She actually was taking burn damage, even though she wasn't showing the graphic for it. Because she died when I wasn't killing her. I should try and use that in court, right? No, she died when I wasn't killing her. I am, I'm innocent. The Marlar Queen is way easier to kill with this weapon than with any other weapon that I personally have used. I know that she is extremely resistant to ballistic damage, and since I use a 50 cal, that is part of the issue. But the fact that you can shoot her from really far away and that she still takes the burn damage is significant. So there you go, kids. The new Cremator is an effective VATS weapon if used properly. It's expensive to fire at 15 fuel per shot, so make sure that you're targeting the body part that gives you the highest percentage chance of hitting, and try to make sure that your target is not moving laterally. Use the heavy barrel for the most amount of damage, and also use the slow burning tank for that 1200 damage over 12 seconds. That can be the difference between life or death when fighting a big enemy. Thank you very much for watching. I am Oscap, secretly disguised as a hot little pink cow. And until next time, stay safe out there, Vault Dwellers.